In this video, I'm gonna show you how to connect a mixer to an audio interface for recording. Check it out. What's up everybody, my name is Matthew Stratton bringing you the best tips and tools on how to create music and record audio. On this channel, I'll do setup videos, tutorials, overviews, and reviews just like this one. If you're new to the channel here, consider subscribing. Any of the gear that I'm talking about today will be linked in the description below. So check out the description for any of the gear that I'm talking about, as well as show notes for this video. So there's gonna be various reasons why you wanna connect a mixer to an audio interface. I'm gonna show you a technique that I used to use all the time to go ahead and record inside of a digital audio workstation. And I used to use this technique all the time. This way I can connect a bunch of different devices to my mixer, connect them into my two input audio interface and just select whatever thing that I wanted to record. And so I'm gonna show you how to do that. I'm gonna use this microphone here. So this is a condenser microphone and I'm gonna use my MPC-1 that's located here. And I'm gonna use this electric acoustic guitar right over here. And I'm gonna show you how you can set your levels inside of your audio mixer and send a line out of your audio mixer into your USB audio interface or whatever audio interface that you may have. In this case, I'm using the Focusrite Scarlett 2i2. Now the mixer I do have in front of me is the Behringer Q1202 USB. Now this does have a USB interface built into it. Let's pretend that this doesn't have a USB interface built into it. I'm just gonna show you how to do this um, because you might have a mixer and you might have a USB interface and you might wanna combine the two for whatever reason. So the first thing you're gonna need are your cables and you're gonna need to connect everything properly and set your levels. All right, so here's an XLR cable. I'm gonna connect this to my Rode condenser microphone here. Simply gonna plug it in just like so. So I plugged it into the microphone and then I'm gonna plug it into channel one on my mixer. And then I'm gonna plug in my acoustic electric guitar with this cable here. I'm gonna plug that into channel two and plug the other end into my electric acoustic guitar. And then I wanna plug the line out of the MPC into the mixer. Now this might be any kind of line device. I'm just using an MPC here because this is actually what I used to use back in the day. I used to use the MPC 1000. I would throw a line out of the MPC. So I plug that into the line out of the MPC and I wanna plug it into the line inputs. Okay, five and six on this mixer here. So now that everything's plugged into the mixer, I'm going to go ahead and turn on the mixer. In this case, all I had to do is plug in the power cable. Now, once that's plugged in, I'm going to go ahead and set the levels. So I wanna start with the mic. So I have the gain turned down on everything and I have the volume levels turned down on all the channels here. And then I have the volume on the main mix turned down. Now, right here on level one, I do wanna put that on zero. Now your mixer might say U or Unity, or there just might be an arrow pointing, you know, to where zero would be. So go ahead and put that on zero. Now, once you have that set on zero, make sure your main mix is on zero as well. And if you do have a condenser microphone like I'm using here, you're going to need to turn on your phantom power so you can do that at this time. If you have a dynamic microphone, you don't need to worry about turning on your phantom power. So now that I have the phantom power turned on, I'm going to talk into the microphone and turn up the gain. All right, so I'm talking in the microphone, I'm slowly turning up the gain. As I'm turning up the gain, you're gonna see the meter over here start to glow. Now, eventually it's going to go from 20 here, this is minus 20, and it's going to go to zero. Once it hits zero, we're gonna be in a good level, in a good position, check. All right, so we're about zero right there. So we're looking pretty good. Now, every once in a while, this might go into the positives. That's okay. We don't need it to clip, but if it goes into positive, that's gonna be okay. We're looking pretty good about right there. So after your mic gain is set, you can go ahead and set up the gain of your other inputs. In this case, I'm going to set up the gain on my acoustic electric guitar. Now, before I set the level of this, I'm gonna to have to turn the level down of channel one. And the reason why is because there's no pre-fader level button on here or the PFL button or there's no solo button. So there's no way to single out this channel. And if I start playing the guitar now, it's gonna go through the microphone and I'm gonna get a false signal in here. So I'm gonna turn down the level. Now remember, channel one is on zero. So I'm just gonna turn it to minus infinite. So now right over here, I could turn the level up of channel two and I'll put that on unity or zero. 
and I'm gonna start to get a level here. I might need to boost it a little bit. All right, so we're looking pretty good there. So the levels are set on that. So what I can do now is actually turn down the level of channel two, and then I can move on to the next device. Now, I don't have anything plugged into channel three or four, but five and six is a stereo channel here. All right, so now I need to set the levels of my MPC. So I have the output of the MPC turned all the way up, and then that's gonna be line out into the line in here on the mixer. Now I'm gonna push play on the MPC. Okay, so once I start playing that beat, I'm gonna start turning up the level here. And now zero should be fine. Okay, now depending on how you set your levels inside your MPC, you might wanna turn it up a little bit past zero. I'm gonna put it a little bit past zero. Now, in order for me to do this, I am gonna remember where I put that. So a good way to remember is just to write it down. All right, so now I have my notes so I can remember where everything is. That's gonna be good for you. Now, depending on what song you're working on the MPC and how you have it leveled, it's going to probably determine where you're gonna put the level on there. But everything's set up there, so I wanna push stop on the MPC. Okay, so now that I wrote down the levels of everything, what I can do is turn this level back down to minus infinite. So now I can recall these levels at any time. Now keep in mind, if your mixer does have mute buttons, you could simply mute the channels that you're not using or actively recording, but mine doesn't. So in this case, I'm just turning the level down. So this way we don't get additional noise from the preamps into our main mix. So for the next step, you do need to make sure that you have your focus right drivers installed and everything like that. And then, you know, make sure that your USB cable is plugged into your focus right and into your computer. And then you need to find the main outs of your mixer Plug a stereo cable into that. If you don't have a stereo cable like that, you can too, you can use uh, mono cables like this. Okay, so this is just, uh, you know, happens to have left and right built into it. It's not a big deal if you don't have this, but I'm going to put the black in into where it says L and the red in to where it says R. And then I'm gonna take the other black and red in and plug those into the USB interface. So right here, I wanna put the black in into one, and then I'm gonna put the red in into two. And then that means that the black in is going into channel one of the interface, and that's gonna represent the left channel of the mixer. The red in is going into channel two of the interface, and that's gonna be the right channel of your mixer. Now in this example, keep in mind, I have the gain turned down, on the USB interface on both channels one and two. They're all the way turned down. And right here, there's a button for instrument. I have that button turned off. If it was turned on, it would be glowing like that. Um, I have it turned off because these are actually line level inputs. So you do not want to have your instrument level inputs activated. Another thing to know is to keep your phantom power off on your USB interface, you don't need that on and then you're pretty much set up right there. Now, if you do wanna monitor this, you can use the headphone out on your interface or you could plug your interface into some speakers just like you normally would. In this example, I'm gonna use the headphones out so I don't have to worry about the speakers feeding back into the microphone. All right, so here are my headphones. I'm gonna plug this in into the headphone jack. So right here's the headphone jack. Plug it right into that. So I got my headphones coming out and this is the actual volume knob for the headphones right there. And the next step is to open up your digital audio workstation or your DAW or DAW. If you don't know what that is, I'm about to show you right now, so stay tuned for that. So let's open a digital audio workstation. I'm going to open Ableton Live 10 Lite. This version does come with the Scarlett 2i2, so I'm going to go ahead and open that up. All right, once that's opened up, make sure you do go to your preferences and you know, by going to option preferences and then select your audio interface. So right here in the audio tabs. Okay, so make sure you go ahead and select the correct one. So I am using the Focusrite USB ASIO driver and you know, I don't need to work it so hard. I am going to go to 44.1 kilohertz because I am doing screen recording and doing a bunch of stuff. And for those haters out there and the people who are skeptical, you know, if you wanted a lower latency, you could always adjust your sample rate. 
All right, so we got our driver type as ADO. We got Focusrite USB ADO. We got the input configuration as mono input one and two and stereo inputs one slash two. So that's gonna be good for different things. Now over here, this is simply our stereo output so we can hear them in our speakers or headphones. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of that. Now, um, I'm just gonna delete these extra tracks over here so we don't get confused. And in addition to this, I'm just going to make this right here larger so we can see all the different numbers on the level here. So now what we gotta do is pretty much just pick what we want to record. So for example, if I wanted to record the microphone, I would simply turn the level of that microphone up to zero. Now, if you had a mute button, you would simply unmute channel one, but I don't, so I had to put it back up to zero. And then at this point, everything's set up. And if you look at your doll here, we got audio from external in one. So this is the left channel of the mixer. And then you have audio from external in two. That is the right channel of the mixer. Now, if you want to, you can monitor this by pressing N. Now, if I talk into the microphone, we can see the levels around minus 18. And you'll hear me say set your level around minus 18 a lot. I'll leave a link in the description about the article why I say that. But it's safe to say as long as this green area here is between 50 and 75% of this meter, you're gonna get a pretty good signal. You just don't want the green to go up into the red and you don't want it to clip. And you also don't want it way down here at like negative 54 because if you go too low, you're just gonna hear a lot of noise and you're not gonna get a nice strong signal of what you actually want to record. Now what I'm gonna do now is a test recording. Let's say for whatever reason you wanna record audio from your left and right channel, you could select that here. All right, so right there you could select one and two. Now that's gonna record a stereo track inside of Ableton Live. Now you don't have to monitor in here while you're recording. You can actually turn your monitor off. All right, and then you can go ahead and press record. And I'm gonna go over here so we can actually see what we're recording. And I'm gonna press record here. This is a quick audio test. Uh, this is the Rode NT1 going into the Behringer 1202. The 1202 is going into the Focusrite. And then we are recording right inside of Ableton Live. So I'm gonna put my headphones on so I can hear it. This is a quick audio test. Uh, this is the Rode NT1 going into the Behringer 1202. The 1202 is going into the Focusrite. And then we are recording right inside of Ableton Live. If you're finding value in the video, remember to give this video a thumbs up. It's gonna help this video get seen by those who might wanna see this information. I appreciate you for doing that. Let's jump back into the video. Now, let's say you wanna record your guitar and your vocals and you wanna record them on separate channels, but you wanna record them at the same time, you can do that as well. So if you look at the mixer here, we already have channel one turned up. Let's go ahead and turn channel two up. Remember channel two is the guitar. And then what we can do is balance channel one to the left, okay? And then put the pan to the right on channel two. And then after you do that, inside of Ableton Live, you would basically select audio track one as input one, and then audio track two as input two. And then you can record both your mic and your guitar at the same time. And then in order to do this, you need to arm both your tracks. So if you push control, you're gonna be able to arm that second track there. And then you can see the guitars going in. Now I'm just gonna do a, you know, like a run. This isn't a, ser a serious test or anything but I just wanna show you that this is possible. So I'm going to go ahead and push record. Recording the guitar and my voice, separate tracks, but the mic is going to pick up the guitar too. Do, 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 do. All right, that's enough. <laughs> All right, so you can see that I recorded the audio on track one for the vocals and then the audio on track two for the guitar, and we can listen to this as well. Recording the guitar and my voice, separate tracks, but the mic is going to pick up the guitar too. Now, if I wanted to solo out the voice, I could do that. All right, before I do that, I'm just gonna take the record arm off. So, recording the guitar, here's the vocal, and my voice, separate tracks, but the mic is, here's the guitar. 
do do. All right, that's enough. <laughs> so therefore, you can record your vocal and guitar separately, and you can make them how you want to do that using this method. Now, the next thing I want to show you is how you can record your MPT-1 or any kind of line in device into this. And then after you record it, you can add different things over top of it if you want to. So in order to do this, let's go ahead and turn the level down of one, turn the level down of channel two, and then let's add an audio track and then put the audio from external in one slash two, and then make sure that we turn up that channel five and six where the MPC one's going into to the appropriate level. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to record this into right here inside of Ableton Live. So I'm going to arm the track and just record it right here in this loop. All right, and then what else I'm gonna do is I wanna put this over here so I'm not listening to the other stuff. All right, so here we go. I'm just gonna record it right here on one of these Ableton clips. I'm gonna let it play like a full sequence full. All right, so now it's played through that full sequence in here. So I'm going to make this 100 BPM. I'm gonna show you like some of the stuff you could actually do. Um, now we can play that. All right, I had to do a little bit of Ableton Magic really fast. But you can hear I have this loop now. So what I could do is if I wanted to add a guitar to that, I would just simply go over here to my guitar channel and then I would turn you know, the mixer down on channel five and six where the MPC was. I would turn the guitar channel up and then I could record guitar on it if I wanted to. So we just arm that track and record. And then let's say I wanted to record vocals on that. I would simply turn the guitar track down and then turn the vocal track up, arm the vocal track, and then I can do something else right here in Ableton. All right, so if I want to record a vocal track, I would just hit record on there. All right. Make music, make music, music. All right. And then, you know, I could put that in there if I wanted to. Music, make, music, music, make, music, make, music, music, make, music, make, music, music. All right, so I hope you get the point. I'm not trying to make a masterpiece here. I'm just trying to show you that you can send line out of your mixer into your USB audio interface and record whatever you want to record. You could record separate tracks. You could record an entire mix. Say you wanted to record your band in there. You could do that, uh, whatever you want to do. And I'm also not saying that the Behringer 1202 is the best mixer to get. This is simply the mixer that I have available to me to go ahead and illustrate this. But I did want to do a video illustrating this because I used to do this back in the day uh, because you know when you want to get ideas out quickly, you don't necessarily want to plug and unplug everything over and over again. You just want to scratch out ideas really fast. This is a great way to do it. And you don't have to worry about too much. You could just go in there. Everything's already set up. All your levels are set up. You just go in there and you start recording and you know, you can scratch out demos very quickly and efficiently. All right, if you enjoyed this video, click or tap the screen over here. You might find something else you like. And if you want to subscribe to the channel, consider doing so. My name is Matthew. Continue creating music. We'll talk soon. Thanks, y'all.